You do realize that big tech thinks that you're stupid, right? Big tech definitely thinks that you're stupid. You know how I know that big tech thinks that you're stupid? Because they censor the content that you see. They think that you're too stupid to do the research and find out what's factual on your own. So they think that they have to fact check it for you. The fact that you're even putting up with it is unbelievable. I want you to stop and think about that. Big tech thinks that you're not smart enough to figure out what is a factual story or what is a conspiracy theory. And they're so terrified of different opinions catching some steam that they'll censor it at every cost, which inadvertently has the Streisand effect. I mean, being banned on Twitter inadvertently had the the Streisand effect for my Twitter profile. Banning the New York Post piece inadvertently had the Streisand effect. So every single time they censor opinions and ideas, it inadvertently has the Streisand effect, which inadvertently grows things more. If, If they actually cared about those things, they would just leave those things alone and let the people decide. Let the people decide like, okay, is Eliza Blue speaking about facts? Or is she not talking about facts? Are other, you know, (laughs) multimedia platforms, are they talking about facts? Are they not talking about facts? Is this group, is this this movement talking about facts? Are they fact-based? Man, let the market decide. Why are they out here trying to tell you that you're stupid, that you can't decide on your own? (laughs) But the joke's always on them because it always has a Streisand effect. So... (laughs) It's just, it is wild out here. But don't let big tech make you feel stupid. Words of wisdom from the drop-dead gorgeous Eliza Blue. Welcome, 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 Alliday Mobile Media. Thank you, Eliza. And we'll have more from Eliza in a little bit on censorship issues. And just some food for thought on perhaps why there is so much censorship going on in the media. Of course, Eliza Blue is one of the biggest advocates, and uh, her website, uh, uh, link's in the description, but one of the biggest advocates on human and child sex trafficking in the United States. And of course, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this week, it has been totally insane. And I do mean in frickin sane. The censorship level that has been brought on by various organizations. I myself have had a a, a podcast taken down from YouTube. We've had to push it in other places. Um, And I'm going to read you this here. This this is, and I I know the argument, okay? We're going to get into some things today. We're going to talk about Section 230. It's part of law that was written in 1995. Um, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit here, but I want to read you this. If you have a website and you have been using YouTube as a method of driving traffic, traffic to your website and who doesn't do that. Now, what I'm reading you is the rules. One of the rules in terms of conditions for YouTube and Google. If you have a website and you have been using YouTube as a method of driving traffic to your website, then you may want to take note. It would appear that Google, who have owned YouTube since late 2006, are on a mission to clean up the internet by reading it of spam and ensuring that all content created and published by webmasters is useful, quote unquote, little quotation marks, useful to those who are reading it. For many years, thousands upon thousands of people have been complaining that their YouTube accounts have been terminated with not so much as a warning, an explanation, or any hope of getting them back. Today, there seem to be no signs of things changing as it is estimated that Google permanently deletes over 10,000 YouTube accounts every single day. Why is this happening? Google's official explanation for the sudden removal of accounts. Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? You're sitting down, I hope. Google's official explanation for the sudden removal of accounts and uploaded videos is that such content is in violation of 
one or more of over a dozen different policies that they have created and enforced over the years. These policies have been designed and created in order to ensure that all videos uploaded are suitable for the YouTube audience. As a result, all videos that are uploaded into the website are monitored in order to ensure that they do not violate any of these policies. Depending on the nature of the content of the video, it may be subject to further moderation and in many cases, even manual review. YouTube account holders who upload too many videos that violate strict policies will find that they are promptly banished from the website and any subsequent accounts created afterwards, regardless of their actual content of the videos uploaded, will suffer the same fate. Now here's my question, ladies and gentlemen. Here's my question. Who, who is the person that gets to decide, make those decisions? Who are those people? This past week, uh, uh, many, 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 many people have been, uh, uh, I mean, I, I have a whole list of people that, that I'll present here in just a minute. They have been uh, uh, presented, uh, I mean, they, their YouTube accounts have been terminated. Uh, uh, one of them, uh, uh, millions of followers of uh, uh, Polly St. George, the amazing policy. But there is, uh, uh, I mean, of course, the Keep, a great, Keep America Great movement, Make America Great Again, all, all, the, all the people that support Donald Trump, they are coming out and screaming very loud. They are screaming CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, the media, Google, USA Today, all these people, MSNBC, that they are, the, they're the real virus, not, not the coronavirus or the big b beer bug. Uh, uh, and, and something happened in the podcast, uh, I mean, not in the podcast, but excuse me, the, the, the town hall meeting with Trump about QAnon. Will you condemn QAnon? And he goes, well, you know, I don't know anything about them except that they are against pedophilia. And I don't have a problem with that. That is what Mr. Trump said. I, I can still hear him saying that. And this gal, uh, uh, um, Savannah Guthrie, attacked him. Makes you wonder about Savannah Guthrie. When she attacks somebody for saying, look, I don't know anything about this organization except that they are against pedophilia and I don't have a problem with that. They're against pedophilia. I don't have a problem with that. Well, will you denounce them? Why won't you denounce them? How come you won't denounce them? Well, wait a minute. He just told you he doesn't have a problem with what they are against. Now, I have to ask this question and it begs the question. QAnon is against pedophilia. Why is every mainstream media and the people in Congress look at the people in Congress, I'm not going to make any accusations, I'm just saying look at who is accusing them of being dangerous conspiracy theorists. They're against pedophilia. The Democratic Party and the mainstream media are condemning them for being a conspiracy theorist. And of course, what has triggered all of this this week is the censorship of articles that concern Joe and Hunter Biden on Facebook and Twitter. Of course, uh, unbelievable what was done there. And, you know, it, it's like I say, Google, they'll, they'll take something down and Google, YouTube is part of Google. And, and, and here's the, the argument, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're on their platform, so you play by their rules. It's like if you go to your friend's house. His mom and dad had different rules. Her mom and dad had different rules. Uh, uh, I'd go to my buddy's house. Mom and dad had different rules. When I went to the girl's house, mom and dad definitely had different rules. And you played by those rules. You didn't just get to go in their house and disrespect their house. That is putting the argument in, in general kind of terms. When you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, when you're on Parler, when you're on Wimkin, all these other platforms that are, that are springing up everywhere... You have to play by their rules. They get to set the rules. Why do they get to set the rules? And we'll get to that in a little bit here, Section 230. Um, but if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, last week I was talking about the sterile environment you get into because you can't get on the telephone. You can't talk to anybody. 
This last week, I, I produced a podcast on masks, the hazards of wearing masks. I used uh, uh, sound bites from uh, uh, Zana Ayesha down in uh, uh, Australia. Uh, uh, and I, I'm drawing a blank on the doctor's name right now out of Holland. But uh, I, I use sound bites from these people, so I have merit on what I'm saying and what I'm claiming. I have I put links in the description to the statements that I made in the podcast, but they tell me your content was removed due to a violation of our community guidelines. So I send them a note. Please be specific. What part of my contact violates your, con, your, your, your guidelines? What spam or deceptive practices am I practicing? Okay, this was their response, ladies and gentlemen. After further review of the content, we have determined that your video does violate our community guidelines. Again, I put it in this morning. They removed the video. So I appeal it again. Please, what is it? that I did so I can edit the video. What is it that is, goes against your guidelines so I can comply with your guidelines, okay? I, I'm willing to play by the rules, but you gotta tell me what I'm doing here, you know? I, I mean, you gotta tell us what we're doing. It, it's just kind of weird, you know? Um, and, and again, these people have been protected by Section 230. I, I, I've linked Section 230 to this. Um, this is what I don't get, okay? And again, this falls back to Q. This was a meme that I got off uh, uh, social media. Dear Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, your censorship technology seems to be highly effective. Please consider using the same method to remove all child pornography and pedophilia accounts. Save the children, hashtag. And my only gripe about this meme is if you Google save the children, it takes you to the Clinton Foundation. The correct term, ladies and gentlemen, save our children is the movement. And again, how do you know that you're telling the truth? This is how you know right now. This is how you know you're telling the truth. Because you'll get blocked on Facebook. Twitter will delete you. Google hides it. YouTube bans it media censorship and our government is forbidding it uh, uh, people like Nancy Pelosi and again these guys right here these are the two main culprits Mark Zuckerberg they're there I, I shouldn't say let me let me rephrase that they're the head honchos of Facebook and Twitter they're I, I, I shouldn't I mean I, I don't know if they're directly responsible but we'll say we'll phrase it this way they have a say, and they can say, back the Jeep up. That's all it would take from them, because they're the ones that I, I'm, I'm guessing the phrase would apply. They sign the checks, as they say. But this is the general feeling out there. They don't silence you because your voice doesn't matter. It's because when everybody starts talking, you're so powerful, and yeah, you got to wonder, you got to wonder, you got to wonder. These two guys right here, they are the people. But let's talk about Google for just a minute. Mr. Brin, he was the co-founder of Google. He is now the president of Alphabet. He's worth about $50 billion getting up there. But uh, uh, his wife, he was married to his wife for eight years. Ann Wojcicki. Chicky, uh, I am probably enunciating that incorrectly, and I apologize, Ann. I'm, I, I'm not even going to attempt your sister Susan's name. Uh, uh, but she's the co-founder, 23andMe. That's a DNA database, ladies and gentlemen. Susan, her sister, is the CEO of YouTube, $410 million. The other one's a billion dollars net worth. But YouTube censorship, Google censorship google controls algorithms google sets algorithms to deliver information when you do a search so they can bury information if they want uh, uh, a while back if you didn't understand what i was saying about algorithms a while back ladies and gentlemen an algorithm is just what it says a rhythm 
and how they work when they set an algorithm truth that'll that'll be what the algorithm is looking for truth everything that has truth in it whether it's a sentence a phrase or whatever word google will grab it untruth truth truthfulness it will grab whatever that is and look at it if they don't like it they get rid of it It, it's that that and that's what it is um and 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 the question but uh uh, kelly mcenany the press secretary i mean come on the press secretary the amazing Polly. these people are not ladies and gentlemen telling untruths they're telling information there's got there has to be somebody that doesn't want you to hear the information that they're putting out why would they censor the press secretary excuse me the white house press secretary gets censored what the heck is it that she is saying oh she retweeted or posted a link to the joe biden article about him and his son that is worthy of I, I mean I hate to go down this road but the Nazis called it controlling information now today we're calling it fact-checking terrorism the best political weapon for nothing drives people harder than the fear of sudden death I'm gonna read this to you ladies and gentlemen this is a quote this is what N- Herman Goring the Minister of Propaganda for the Nazi military commander, he this is what he said at the Nuremberg trials. Okay, Th- this is fact. Why, of course, the people don't want war. Why would some poor slob on a farm want to risk his life in a war when the best that he can get out of it is to come back to his farm in one piece? Naturally, the common people don't want war neither in Russia, nor in England, nor in America, nor for that matter in Germany. That understood. But, after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine the policy, and it is always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it is a democracy, or a fascist dictatorship, or a parliament, or a communist dictatorship voice or no voice the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders pay attention to this part right here voice or no voice the people can always be brought to the bidding of their leaders that is easy all you have to do is telling them they're being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger it works the same way in any other country this was the Nuremberg trials in 1946 now I, I posted this before and, and it's uh, I, I got dinged for it um, and, and I hope I don't get dinged here look I'm, 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 all I'm attempting to try to do is show you and make you aware that there is an issue with censorship going on right now and it's going on in a lot of places ladies and gentlemen these accounts right here, Destroying the Illusion, Red Pill 78, Praying Medic, Joe M, iPod, X22 Report, Edge of Wonder, SGT Report, Space Shot 76, Woke Society's Amazing Policy, the Amazing Polly, Truth and Art TV, Patriots Soapbox, Dustin Nemos, and we know. Stropy me just informed talk Sarah Westall. What do they all have in common with Angela Box, Kelly McEnany, the President of the United States? They're telling the truth. Somebody doesn't want them telling the truth. This uh, uh, right here, if you cannot read that when you freeze it, contact me. I will get you the slide. Um, and if anybody wants the slides that are in this presentation, please leave a comment down below. We'll contact, uh, we can back channel each other, and I'll get you the slides on this presentation. My last presentation was 
there were 11 views on it before it was taken down. It, 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 it's like I said, I have it put away in other places. If you want to see what I said on the masks, let me know. But when you take a look at what's going on right here, what is going on in social media is directly a result of these people's actions. Who? That person right there, her hubby was in office in 1995 when Section 230 was written that is in question right now um, about what's going on. It was Bill Clinton that was in office, and uh, uh, the, the, the section is very controversial. And again, Q, where we go one, we go all. It is a movement. It is not a conspiracy theory. Everything, and this is just my experience with the Q, Anon, movement, people, whatever you want to call them. When I start chasing the leads that are put down there's fact to it it's not it's it, it, it's not crazy ladies and gentlemen it, it's not that crazy and it's not that far-fetched um richard grinnell was another one that has been censored i'm going to take a pause here we're going to slip in another uh, uh this is a, another clip uh, uh from eliza blue and uh, uh, listen to what she has to say. And uh, we'll be back shortly. I'll be back shortly in, uh, uh, with, with some more information. Censorship. As the whole world talks about Section 230, let's talk about the facts. The numbers that you're about to see are from a New York Times 2019 article. They're reported from 2018. Since this article went to print, the numbers have skyrocketed. During the COVID-19 lockdown, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children have reported a 126% increase in reported child sexual abuse material. A large portion of this child sexual abuse material is reported from Twitter and Facebook. Twitter and Facebook repeatedly leaves this material up for way longer than it should be, despite the fact that the technology exists to take it down. Not only does the technology exist to take it down, it exists to use facial recognition to potentially save victims' lives. So just remember, the next time that Twitter or Facebook is censoring your favorite politician, a news article, or folks that they don't like, remember what they choose to keep up and what they choose to take down. They're profiting off of this material. The caveat is that Section 230 has FOSTA SESTA amendment in it, which makes it wrong and illegal to have this material up. This material is a human rights violation every single time. And Miss Blue is not lying one little bit when she says they are profiting. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you, Eliza, for uh, uh, providing the, the content uh, uh, of the last two clips. And I, I sincerely appreciate it for uh, you letting me use that for my production. And I'm hoping we can keep this, uh, uh, that I haven't offended anybody so bad that this stays up. I just, I, I really think that it is high time we, the people, come together and we start talking about this. We start having a conversation about this. Look, I had a conversation last night with somebody I haven't seen since 1974. Craig from high school, uh, uh, his father or his uncle, I guess it was, was a judge. But we, we had talked about, uh, and he, he's kind of conservative, but we, we discussed back in high school, they had debate class. What happened to civil discourse in this uh, uh, country? Uh, and, and why I've been processing this and going through stuff, I've been checking things, and I see some conversation uh, uh, that Eliza's involved in right now, and it's horrendous. I, I, I cannot believe what people are saying. We can disagree, but we don't have to go at each other with baseball bats. This is just insane, ladies and gentlemen. It is just insane. Look, 
if you want, as I said earlier, if you would like slides from this production, please contact me. Leave a message below. I sincerely hope the YouTube people are not offended or I haven't done anything to violate community standards. I've only produced what is out there already in social media statements. Uh, uh, as I said, Eliza Blue has assisted me. In the description are links to various comments and statements that I have made that support my statements. Uh, of course, the link to, to my website and the link to uh, uh, my PayPal account, uh, uh, if, if you can help out, and uh, like with all uh, uh, independent journalists, um, one voice, a a SQ says, where we go one, we go all. That is not so much we're an army or anything, but what it is, the more people that speak up, the more people that speak out about what is going on, the louder our voice becomes. When you look at the rallies that Mr. Trump is putting together, I, I'm telling you, they're having fun. They're coming together. They're coming together for a common cause. When you look at the other side of the equation, there's violence. There's mayhem. There's insanity going on. That's not what America's about. America's about the the mom and pop Chinese restaurant on the corner and on the other corner, the mom and pop Italian restaurant and on the other corner, the mom and pop Mexican restaurant and on the other corner, the mom and pop Thai restaurant. That's what America's about. Those people all came to America, brought their cultures with us, with them, excuse me, and they share it with us. That's what America's about. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're being shut down and the people who scream the loudest about representing those people who come to America with their cultures are the ones shutting this country down and shutting their business out. That is some food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. On that note, you can find me on the parlor, on the Twitter, at Alliday LLC. I will be developing more social media platforms. I got to turn them over to the authorities before I do that, and you all know why that is. Um, that said, Look for me on other social media platforms coming soon. I will, I will get the Patreon station up. I will get the bit shoot up because you never know what is going to happen. Polly St. George, right out of the blue, boom. All her content gone. And think about that, ladies and gentlemen. She had a million plus followers. All her content is gone. I have over seven years of content in YouTube. Over 1,100 videos in YouTube. If they shut me down, think about everything that I lose. It's insane. And I'm going to do a separate podcast on Section 230. I'm going to get more information. I have the law. I have how it reads. I'm, uh, I'll make a presentation for that and I will go over that and we'll discuss Section 230 and why it was put in play, and of course, it's going to be my opinion, but I have some strong opinions on why it was put in play, and I, I think many people will look at this and say, hey, you know what? It was planned. Maybe it was planned, maybe it wasn't. Who am I to say? I'm just a little guy with a little bit of a reach, and I sincerely hope that I have enlightened your day, and I want to thank you for being part of my day. Once again, Thank you to the drop dead gorgeous and very courageous young lady, Eliza Blue. Thank you very much for your content, young lady. Links to her website in the description. She has a good fight on her hands and she is, uh, uh, it's a great cause. Go to her website, help her out. Um, and like I said, all us independent journalists, we can all use a helping hand. If you can help out, we sure would appreciate it over here at Alliday Mobile Media. Ladies and gentlemen, somewhere here in the Midwest, for Alliday Mobile Media, it is moi. Let's have a good day, and let's all be safe out there, huh?